Ricky Lambert is back with me. Are there too many commissioners, Ricky? Uh, look, I think we're heading into some dangerous territory where there's now commissioners being proposed by New South Wales Labor for an agriculture commissioner and a dairy commissioner as well to help <laughs> represent farmers. Well, of course, there is this in other countries. Uh, America's system has commissioners um, instead of departmental heads. They're sort of like a commissioner. Europe has the same. I mean, let's have a look at what happens uh, when you put commissioners in instead of, say, the work of the parliament making the decisions in Europe. But there's some really interesting examples. Well, the European commissioner that's meant to represent agriculture started tweeting not long ago that he was had negative views about industrial farming, as he called it, or in effect um, livestock farming. They've lost control of the person. And so when New South Wales Labor came out with this proposal over the weekend for an independent agriculture commissioner, and don't get me wrong, I think agriculture needs good representation, I put this question to Jenny Aitchison, the Shadow Minister, about why are we hiring people on the taxpayer dollar to do what local members should be doing? Well, I'd say that's certainly true in the Upper Hunter, and I'd say that uh, the nationals up in the Upper Hunter have taken that seat for granted and have taken farmers for granted. I know in my electorate I've had farmers who've come to me and even from other places around the state and said that they've had concerns, you know, getting planning approvals for particular expansions of a dairy or um, something like that, um, feedlots or whatever. And when I've tried to approach the current Agriculture Commissioner about this, uh, I, it's been answered as an email from the Director-General of Primary Industries and told that it has to go through the Minister for Agriculture, who's then flicked it off to the Minister for Planning. And in some cases, I'm still waiting for a response. And of course, Ricky, in New South Wales, the Berejiklian government actually did appoint commissioners, so it looks like Labor and the Coalition are on the same side here. But why is it that uh, the departments aren't writing these reports? Why do we need a separate commissioner to do it? Are the departments um, not responsible? Are we looking to widen the terms of reference uh, by bringing in a commissioner uh, or are we just um, getting more public servants? Yeah, well speaking across the Flow family, Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia, it seems in New South Wales they're on a unity ticket about having an agriculture commissioner. There's not really one that exists in Vic or in South Australia. But this um, commissioner was appointed part-time in August of last year by the Berejiklian government and now Labor are saying, well, we want to ramp that up. They're always in favour of having more public servants, Labor. We want them to be a full-time commissioner and have more power and independence. And certainly there is a good case for that individual to have more independence, as um, Shadow Minister Aitchison said in that grab. You write to this person and you end up hearing from the minister. It's not a good look for a supposedly independent commissioner. But again, you're just outsourcing this work that should be getting done properly by governments. It's kind of scary. It suggests that the playing field is getting tilted more and more against farmers and we need to hire more public servants to pull it back the other way. And the question then is why are the regional representatives in the parliaments, whether they're state or federal, like your local member, are they not representing the interests of farming or maybe mining in their relevant constituency? Is that a problem that we're now having to hire more commissioners um, to put in place what they, maybe local members aren't lobbying for? Well, that's what uh, Jenny Aitchison has said there is that in the Upper Hunter and I want to come back to the Upper Hunter in a moment in terms of why that's important uh, they're saying the local Nationals member there wasn't being effective in representing local people. So this is the concern is that and in New South Wales it's pretty ripe with the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party growing in what would be considered the Nationals patch. There's a feeling that these parties aren't representing effectively country people my preference is that these things are resolved at a ballot box not by hiring more public servants. But the Upper Hunter continues to be a case study for what why it's helpful to look at your voting alternatives and make your seat marginal because this is why Labor goes up to Scone and makes an announcement there about a new agriculture commissioner and a dairy commissioner over the weekend that's a strong dairy area you're seeing major parties suddenly interested in committing to regional areas when their seat is at risk yeah very interesting and that uh, is uh, right across the spectre in South Australia in Victoria we've uh, seen uh, in state politics uh, independence um, win regional seats and uh, it's important for our local members to keep in mind those constituencies uh, the conservative nature of those constituencies and why they don't feel that they're being represented in both federal and state parliament by those uh, in their areas there is uh, a interesting point here do we get more commissioners or do we ask our representatives to actually do their job